Okay, so James, on um, on a scale from one to ten, given your your current plans and expectations for this company going forward, how important is this news in the grand scheme of things? Ten. As simple <laughs> as that. <laughs> it's is uh, it. Oh, go on, keep keep asking. Uh, no, I was just going to ask. Like, okay, I wouldn't expect you to say anything else as a CEO. So, you, you but probably every news release is important. How come this one's a ten? Because it's exactly what we were looking for. Is this is near surface mineralization, and the, the really cool thing about this though is that this is as near surface as we can physically get. They, we went through the overburden, which, if nobody's familiar with that term, that's all the all the sediments and, and boulders and sand that the glaciers left behind on the rocks that are immediately beneath there. So we went through 35 meters of overburden, which is all basically waste rock and you have to get rid of it anyway. And we hit mineralization right there. It's, it's, it's at its highest uh, or nearest surface point that is absolutely possible on, on, on the Accio system. So this, this just adds to a lot of things that we have uh, that we want to see. You know, we've been looking for unconformity mineralization because we've always been saying that the unconformity is closer to surface than what we've been hitting. And so now this, this adds that possibility, but it also adds the possibility that we will find more of this shallow material throughout the Accio system. And that's, you know, what if, like I'm just completely speculating on all of this, obviously, because we don't we don't know how big Accio can get. Uh, we don't have a resource or anything like that. We don't know any any of the economics. But let's just assume for a very quick second here that Accio can be mined out in an open pit style. You're you're basically mining ore right up, right off the get go. As soon as you get rid of that overburden, you're into ore. You've got you've got value in the rocks right there. You don't have to, it, let's even step one, one big, one step further and say, okay, well, maybe this is just a little offshoot of something. And, and the real, uh, the real resource that you want to pull out of the ground is, is slightly off. So as you're digging out a pit wall, well, this becomes part of the pit wall. So it's still, it's still adding value to, to what is potentially there. Hmm. Okay. But so you also say that you, you've hit, like you hit radioactivity when it gets there. That's where it gets kind of complicated to me because it's uranium and not gold. Is that the same thing as hitting like the actual stuff? Like you, you can make yellow cake out of the stuff that you've hit at surface. Is that, <laughs> can I put it that way? I would say it's pretty fair to put it that way. We don't know the grades, which is, you know, that's that's the big thing. Uh, but based on the previous drills, so this, it's a little bit of a comparology that if we go back to the the four first discovery drill holes where we had uh, AK-2101, 20, the discovery drill hole. Mm. The average radioactivity in that drill hole was about 619, I'd like to say, 619 counts per second. And it came back with an average grade of about 0.13. This intersection that we had here had a higher radioactivity, about 900. I, I can't do a one-to-one -one comparison, but I would assume that the radioactivity levels or the, the, the grade levels that we could possibly see here in this whole 38 discovery would be of higher. So just spitballing a number, again, we have no way of confirming this right now until we get assays back, but let's throw out a number of 0.2. And I like using that number because we go back to the history of mining in the Athabasca Basin, uh, Uranium City, their average grade for 60 million pounds of basically what they pulled out of the, out of the ground was around 0.2. So if they were, if I know it's 1950s, 1980s, it's a whole different mine frame of, of mining and everything, but they were mining at 0.2% U308. So if we're seeing something similar to that, that's where I like this. That's where I really like this thing going and, and the potential that is really there. So if they're turning it into to, to ore with those type of grades, why can't we? Hmm. Okay. And um, again, there's a lot of speculation here because we don't know the, um, we don't know the grades and also, I think that's not the entire drill hole that you reported, right? This is you, like, you're going to be reporting more throughout the next couple of weeks. And that's also like, did you necessarily have to do it that way? Like, is it, is it I guess you, you did because you, I mean, it's a 10, but like, how, how come you're splitting those news releases? Simply because again, it was, it was a 10. This is very uncommon for the Athabasca, mm. uh, having, having mineralization that shallow. 
extremely uncommon. People are, people are exploring down to 300, 500 meters depths, even 200 meters depth, um, seeing something at, at this shallow. And again, I got to go back to the history of mining in the Athabasca. What well, moves forward? The quickest and easiest deposits that have moved forward are the open pits. The ones that they've even they either either found mineralization at surface, like in Uranium City, or they had to go, uh, they had to drill through the overburden and make discoveries that way. Rabbit Lake, your Clough Lake system, lower grade, lower grade type of deposits. So everyone, everyone, everyone's always up in arms and saying, "Oh, you have to have the Athabasca grades. You have to have your one percent, your five percent, your twenty percent." No, guys, look at the history of mining in the Athabasca. You're not mining those grades most of the times. Mm. You're mining grades that are less than 1% and quite frequently. Mm. Mm. Do you, <laughs> I was going to say, do you think any of that matters? I'm going to put it that way. <laughs> Does really any of it, I mean, what I mean here is that it seems to me like you, you can find arrow on dopamine or whatever and still wouldn't move the stock in, in the way that it should with this kind of moves that we've been having in the market. So, do you think it's mostly the market that matters in this whole, yeah, and I'm looking at it as a retail investor here. You're looking at it as a geologist, obviously, but like, obviously this matters for the geology. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't, but does it, does it really matter for the market or are you mostly depending on the market? I think it does matter for the market. I, I think it gives us a, a very a valuable NPV right off the bat. When we, when you consider open pit, any type of open pit mining versus underground mining, it's it's definitely valuable. I uh, actually had a colleague recently, you know, point that out, especially in in a in the current situation of really high inflation. This mm -hmm. matters. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm not challenging you enough, either because there's not much to challenge you on or because I don't understand it and both of those are possible. <laughs> but what I do understand, what I do see on your map over there is that um the the, the hole was pretty close to one of your peers, uh, 92 Energy. Uh, I don't know how comfortable you are in, in talking about other companies, but does that mean something for them as well? What do you think? Honestly, can't I, I can't speculate beyond that. We mm. we don't know enough of what's in the area. I think the discovery was about 100 meters, at least 100 meters away from the from the project boundary. So that's still quite a distance off. We're not entirely sure what the controlling structure is and its orientation. And that, that has a lot of bearing on which way it goes. Hmm. Yeah. Why I'm asking you this is because if you, if you say this is a 10 and, and it's very close to them, and if you expect it to continue, I would expect you to try and take him out. And now, obviously I'm speculating. We got to be careful with these things, obviously, but we, it, is, is that a possible possible thing up in the future, like M and E action in the sense of, of of you know before you've done more work, would you be looking to do any M and E action, or do you want to do more work? That is a very interesting question, and I think it's 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 too forward looking to really contemplate right now. Okay. We've got our mindset just trying to make Accio the best thing out there, and you know, what happens down the road. Like there are so many possibilities and my mind might even change in the next week or so, but we have to, we have to keep our focus on Accio alone. We've got to make that number one, we've got to make that being the standalone deposits, uh, you know, being the Athabasca's next, next mine. And that's, that is the focus. If, you know, if Accio is sustainable on its own, do you, do you really need to go after 92E? Does there have to be a takeout? Honestly, you don't know. You know what's good for, What's good for us is great for all of our peers in the Athabasca. And I've been saying it a lot that, and again, this goes to Athabasca 2.0, is that there's a lot of uranium, I still think, that is out there that lies outside of the basin itself. I think there's a whole perspective, new style of deposit that we should really be focusing on. And those are the ones that I think will really push the Athabasca into much higher levels than it should be. Bringing on mines, having the possibility for mines left, right, and center coming on every five to 10 years, not these waiting around 20 years, 40 years for mines to come online. Mm. You know, we're, 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 we're going to miss out on the windows that are here. The supply demand scenario is freaking crazy, man. With all of these nuclear builds at build outs that we are seeing happening and they just, Every time I read the news, almost daily, you're just seeing these new, uh, you know, 
countries coming out and saying, okay, we need more nuclear, we need more nuclear, we need more nuclear, we're going to build more, we're going to commit to it. I say, great, let's continue that run. We need the supply, though, to get there. The demand is certainly there. Mm. We need the supply. If we find more of these, these ty- style of deposits in the Athabasca, Ath- Athabasca can go back to being number one jurisdiction for uranium mining and development. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I don't, again, I, I don't even know what I'm doing here. So th- thank you for making this conversation. I don't really have any other questions. What am I, what am I forgetting to ask? Well, what should I be asked? This is maybe the first time that I'm really doing a really technical overview of an exploration company. So what should I be asking here that I'm not? Oof. Man, <laughs> I think you've asked some very intelligent questions and um, hopefully I've answered intelligently as well, but no, I, I think you're asking the right type of questions. You know, what should investors really be looking for on this? How should they be interpreting it? Those are definitely the big things. And those are the things that we are trying to really get out to the public as well, is that, you know, and this was the whole reason why we, we put this news out right away is because it was a freaking game changer for us. Mm-hmm. It's It has that making of being... A potential for having that potential for open pit style of, of deposit and then being so shallow it's right there it's 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 just mind-blowing so there's there's just so much going it's checked off one of our boxes you know we've we've got a number of boxes that we've been trying to check off this entire drill program really high grades we still want to see that we want to see on conformity mineralization because it's typically well where we project it would be shallower which is what we're starting to see so we don't necessarily need on conformity mineralization anymore but it's it would be uh, shallower and typically on conformity style of mineralization is higher grade we want to see a kilometer strike length because our geophysical anomalisms extend for at least 1 to 1.5 kilometers from from the project boundary uh, and where we're drilling towards so we want to see at least a kilometer of mineralization. Hopefully it's there. And we wanted to see shallow mineralization. This is as shallow as we can physically get the mineralization. We can't make it shallower. All we have to do now is just make it bigger if it's possible. But mm-hmm. if it's not there, the potential is there that it could be you know, somewhere down this uh, 1 to 1.5 kilometer strike length. There could be a nice juicy nugget sitting right there, right underneath the overburden, and we won't know until we drill it. Okay, but so this did, this this could have been a good question. This did sort of influence your strategy going forward, the way that you're going to be approaching this from now on is going to be different than what you thought before that. Yes. Mm, yeah, okay. because that and that was this is one of the things that we figured out recently with with some of the holes that we reported is that our structural analysis was was wrong to be very honest and that that comes to just understanding the mineralization in the basin typically let's you know what we call the regional fabric in the rocks so all your rocks it's like a grain of wood you know you, you look at wood all of the, the wood goes in one certain direction and that's the way that most of these athabasca deposits work that you've got your there i'll do it like that so you can see huh but you've got your regional fabric all oriented like that. And your mineralization typically follows that. Sometimes it's a little bit crossed, but it, in general, it follows that direction. There's only one deposit that I know of, and that's in Clough Lake, that has your mineralization completely cross-cutting it. And so once we, once we figured out the structure, once we figured out that the mineralization or the controlling structures on the mineralization that we can see so far look like it was more of this style, so if we're drilling, let's do it this way. If we're drilling this way and we're drilling our three holes, and you can see like that, we're going to hit on one hole and not the other two. But if we change our direction and start drilling this way, we should be seeing intercepts on, on all of the holes. So that's what we have to test. And that's what we want to what, what find out. 